in Plymouth, and we're going ice fishing for smelt with Zachary and Fisher McNaughton and Sean Good from Vermont Fish and Wildlife. It's about 20 degrees. Can't feel my fingers, but soon we're going to be in a warm, toasty tent. Today, we're going to show you how to catch rainbow smelt. Hey, Zach. Hey. I, I got some maggots. What does he have? Maggots. I prefer to call them baby flies. <laughs> the smell are sometimes basically in the mud during the daylight. It's pretty thick. That's how thick it is. We're finally walking on frozen water. For sure. Now, does that have something to do with fishing? Mm, I don't know. Does your dad like fishing? Yes. Might look cool Daddy, can I start if, uh, fishing now? Put it down. I've been ice fishing a lot. Fisher, you even have your own chair. Yeah. What about two of them? So that you can catch two fish. We have our first smelt customer. The red at the bottom is that's, the bottom. That's the lake bottom. Okay. So that, and this is the surface. So that yellow mark right there, that is a smelt. Wow. Sending a sonar signal to the bottom of the lake. So when it goes down, it bounces back, and it reads what's in between. How do I pull it, Daddy? That's his lure going down, and this is the fish below it. Fisher, do this with me. Just do a little jiggle, and then freeze. And then watch that bobber. There we go. Oh. Smelt. There's a smelt. That was so fast. <laughs> we just sat down. And it's not even dark yet. It's not the big flashy, you know, trout or salmon or bass or walleye type of fish. They're a bait fish, basically. They're small, but most often they're five or six inches long. But a lot of people love to eat them, the people who do know how to catch them and where to catch them. Yeah. They're like a chicken nugget because we, we um, cook them a certain way. They're kind of like fish candy to a lot of people. There's a long history and tradition of smelt fishing culture in Vermont. And I mean, I've been fishing since I was, you know, able to walk and, and truck along behind my dad and my grandfather. So yeah, it's, it's why I became a fish biologist. It's something that I loved from the start. Zach's uh, starting his son Fisher out, same way I did for sure, and the way I started my son out. Okay, oh, they're above us, Fisher. Come up a little bit. I want you to reel up and I'll tell you when to stop. Yep, get ready, no, a little bit further. How old are you? Six. I think I started at four. I don't actually know when I started. I started fishing with my father. I've been fishing pretty much my entire life. We had Fisher coming out on the boat with us when he was about four weeks old. When he's about three, three and a half, he started just yanking fish in and he's been hooked ever since. <laughs> So, and a little jig, two, three, and we'll freeze, two, three. There's one more, Daddy. See? We nice. have heat. We have heat. Well done. Sean, make fire. Uh, <laughs> something's happening. Maybe. I think he's got a smell. That's baby. They're getting smaller. They're getting smaller. <laughs> <laughs> it's healthy. Um, you know, it gets people outside moving out of the house, fresh air. Um, especially in the winter time, it, it can, you know, some people just hide <laughs> inside for the entire winter. It's a way to connect with nature and really learn to appreciate the resources we have. It's a tradition that um, people have done for generations. For some, they fish for food. We fish for food somewhat. We do a lot of catch photo release. Fishing has been used as a therapy for people with PTSD. Probably if I weren't paying for fishing equipment, no, I'd be paying for therapy, so. <laughs> <laughs> like I would never go out on a lake on my own volition because I would just think it's cold. I don't, but it's beautiful being out here. So they have a very distinct smell, which um, Robert describes as watermelon-like. He's a wiggler. Oh, jeez. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh. What's it smell like? You smell it? Uh, spring. It's not like fishy like you think of other species. Like no. when you get lake trout slime on you, ugh, that is awful. They school in large numbers. When you learn the technique and learn how to catch them, it can be pretty fast and furious. And you know, it's not uncommon to catch a couple of hundred, you know, amongst a, a few people in a night. You start your show out. Hi, I'm Zach McNaughton, and I am not a, a professional, professional angler. Because yeah. <laughs> I really wanted to do something educational so to help Vermonters, people in this region who really wanted to get into this and just didn't know where to start. I'll use the Master Angler program that Sean has in order to find people 
to take me out and teach me. So. Chain of Lakes, it follows the highway that's got a river that flows through it, so many of them are interconnected and they're deep, they're clear, they got a lot of great sport fish. It's kind of a mixed warm water, cold water fishery. My rod tip just went, Daddy. oh, you just got bit. Watch your bobber, bud. Why is it not going crazy? It went crazy a second ago. <laughs> the entire screen is full of fish underneath. So we have now. about 30 feet of fish below us. <gasps> Are we getting one? Fisher, Are we getting one? Are we getting one? one? Are we getting one? Yeah! Oh! Good job, buddy. What kind of fish have you caught? Rock bass, pumpkin seeds, perch, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, barbet, catfish, rainbow trout, more smelt. Finally, all those fish are gonna come up here. Fisher's <laughs> got one. I've Whoa! got one. Oh, am I oh, 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 that's a good one. Now it's just absolutely loaded. There, there are thousands and thousands of smelt below us right now. You're swimming the wrong way, fishy. Oh, there, oh, there you go. You'll go down. There. I'm gonna keep a small amount for a meal. And we only keep what we need and what we know we'll use. Yeah, that, that was a bite. Did you see that? Oh yeah, yeah. You're getting a nibble right now. There you go. You got them. When you have healthy habitats and abundant populations of wildlife and fish existing on those landscapes, then that's what gives us recreational opportunities as anglers and hunters and whatever it is you want to do in the great outdoors. You know, I view part of my job as a fish biologist to manage uh, these resources on the aquatic side to ensure that the habitats, the shorelines, the water quality itself, the habitat that exists within those waters to be good and, and sound and healthy that supports those fish populations that then in turn provides these recreational fishing opportunities that we're out here doing. There's so many fish down there right now that I can't see my lure on the graph. Yeah. They let all of our fish go. <laughs> no. Catastrophe, catastrophe. <laughs> it's uh, underwater green light. Ooh, that's bright. We're drying in the zooplankton and then the plankton draw in the fish. What the, it just went through the ice. Why should someone else try ice fishing? Cause I wanna go with them. <laughs>